Hey guys, well here I am at Fusion 360 again, and this may look familiar to you. This is my original enclosure for the Precision Matthews 727 conversion. This is the enclosure I'm currently using. It's time for a little bit of an update. When I originally designed this, although it works really well, there are a couple of things that I don't really care for after using it for a couple of years you just find things that you'd like to change so let's talk about one of them first of all I put this tray in here so that the thought behind it was I could remove this and kind of scoop all of the chips and the shavings down into maybe a bucket or something turns out that it, with the mill in here there's really not a lot of space in the front so I can't really move from this area over into here. It didn't really turn out the way it was intended. And to be honest, I very rarely move this pan. What I'd like to do is kind of just remove this altogether. The problem I'm having is during a run, a long run, this tends to leak. And it's kind of like a leaky roof. You know it's leaking, but you're not really sure where it's coming from. I've kind of tried to seal it up best I could, but it still leaks. So what I'd like to do is remove the pan and take these guides off and just put in a patch panel, so to speak. So let me show you what I've kind of drawn up here. What I have is this tray here. And so it's recessed about an inch here. It's got a bigger drain hole because I intend to upgrade the coolant a little bit and give me more volume. Uh, the coolant pump I currently have, although it works, it doesn't give me enough volume. And the bigger drain will be help me better evacuate all the extra coolant that I'm going to be pumping into the enclosure. A bigger drain hole, a little recess, and then I've also kind of dipped this down here. You can see it kind of angles this way, and it also angles toward the drain ever so slightly. You can kind of see it right there. Let's see what it looks like with this installed. So the plan is to just kind of come in here or weld it into place and make it permanent and try to seal this up so that we don't have any more leaks. I'll have better coolant evacuation with the bigger hole and I've also kind of moved it over to the side here so that it's out of the way. So I'll be trying to make this modification in the next week or two. So I wanted to take a kind of take a quick look at this uh, patch pan. So I got a couple of pieces of 16th inch sheet metal here. This is a uh, pretty thick uh, that's what the original enclosure pan was made out of, so I went back with the same thing. Uh, I've laid this out. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a bend line here down the middle. And I'm just going to fold this up just slightly, give it a little bit of an angle for a drain. And then around here, I've got a half inch uh, lip. I'm just going to bend it slightly. And then this will go up underneath, and I'll just go down through here and weld this. That should seal it up. For the pan, I've got a, another piece of sheet metal here. I've drilled a hole in here for the drain. And you can see I'm just going to fold these edges up and make a little box and uh, weld those seams up. You can see here that I've angled it for the this pan here to kind of made up with it. And I took a little piece of sheet metal and made me a tube. I'm going to weld this up, stick it in there like so, and that'll be my drain. This is a piece of one inch PVC and I'm, hopefully it'll slide right on there real nice and then that'll drain straight down into my uh, coolant tank. For this I just took a piece of pipe and I just bent it around and then I kind of flared it a little bit because my hole saw was a little bit bigger diameter than the actual tube that I was bending. But I think it'll turn out nice. I'll go ahead and weld that around there and that should seal up really well. 
Now for this project, I had to pick up a TIG welder. Now, over the years, I have stick welded, I've MIG welded. I used to do a lot of MIG welding for the company that I work for, uh, making repairs. However, I've never really done any TIG welding. But I know that TIG welders now are, are pretty economical. I, I mean, they go from anywhere from a couple hundred bucks off of eBay. I see videos on those, and some are, they claim to be pretty good, but having not ever TIG welded before, I don't really know. Number one, I don't really know what to get, and I don't really know uh, what I need. So I did a little research on that, and I'll show you what I picked up in the next video. Okay guys, I got all this sheet metal bent up. Uh, I don't have a brake or a shear, so I took it and ran down to my uh, dad's shop and I was able to form this up. He has a very small brake. This is 16th inch uh, sheet metal, so it was pretty tough trying to get all these bends, but I was able to hammer this out and get it pretty close. But you can kind of see how the tray is going to go. And then the drain will go in there like so. And this piece here, I just sort of made a V-shape and then just a little bit two degree bend here. And it's flat up here. This is going to go together like so. And then that will drain everything towards the drain hole here. And hopefully... I can get all this welded up so that I don't have any kind of leaks. So now that I have this all formed up, I've got to come back and squeeze this together and weld this up. And for that, I'm going to be using a TIG welder. It's a used TIG welder that I picked up here recently. Uh, I have no idea how to TIG weld. I've never tried it. All right, guys, stay tuned for that video. Well, thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to comment if you have any questions. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe. And most importantly, be safe.